Hi all, so today I'm just going to work through um, the exam so that I can show you guys um, how to work all these problems. So which structure below does the nitrogen have a formal charge of negative one? So nitrogen starts with five electrons, so if we're subtracting the number of bonds and electrons, that's one, two, three, four. So this one has a formal charge on nitrogen of plus one. For structure two, the nitrogen has in five valence electrons is what it starts with. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you're subtracting two electrons and four, two bonds and four electrons. So that equals negative one. Um, this is plus one. I don't know what that is there for. For three, our nitrogen starts with five valence electrons. It has one, two, three bonds and one, two electrons, so that equals zero, so it's a neutral form of charge. For four, looks like our nitrogen has two bonds. I'm gonna scratch that out and redraw like that. So the nitrogen starts with five, minus three bonds, minus two electrons, so that's zero, and then the same thing for five. It looks like the nitrogen minus three bonds, minus two electrons equals zero. <clears throat> So the right answer choice should be two. So that would be answer B. Okay, for the second question, which of these is the strongest acid? Well, first, when you're asking which is the strongest acid, you think about pKa's of different functional groups, right? But these are all the same functional groups. so. All of these, the main functional group here is this carboxylic acid. So all of these should have a pKa roughly in the four to five range, roughly. <clears throat> but we have to consider any other possible effects. So is there the inductive effect? Is there resonance? Is there something else that's going to help stabilize the lone pair that's left behind when you have your carboxylic acid? After it's lost a proton, it looks like this. You know, we've got our negative charge there. So is there anything that's going to help stabilize that? And anything that basically spreads electrons out will do that. So if you have a strong electron with drawing group like fluorine really close, it'll pull some of the negative charge towards those fluorines, right? The less electronegative, the least strong the inductive effect will be. So... When I look for that, I consider, are there any electronegative molecules, or atoms, I mean, not molecules, and how close are they? So there's chlorine, bromine, bromine. Well, in these, these are further away than this. And between these two, the bromine would be less effective anyway. <clears throat> so we've eliminated all these as, as we find one closer. This is closer, so that's beating out this, and then this fluorine is two away, so it's not as strong of an effect. So just by knowing that a closer inductive effect is going to more stabilize the lone pairs left behind, you can narrow this down to D. Or if you know it's more electronegative, then you can narrow it down to just D and E, whichever one makes the most sense to you. Okay, the next question lists these in order of decreasing acidity. So whenever I do this, I just basically put the pKa's of all of these functional groups. So roughly these functional groups are going to have pKa's close to this and it's decreasing acidity. So that's most acidic to least acidic. So that is going to be, oh, I'm going off the page here. So that is going to be <clears throat> smaller pKa to larger pKa. And all these functional groups are the same. I just used um, A because it was easier to, to basically reach. You could also do down here, but this actually does appear to be in the right order. 15.7, 25, 38, and then 50. So the right answer for that is answer choice A. So what I would do is if the, you know, if I had chosen this one and it was 15.7 and then 38, and then 25, and then 50, then I would say, well, water, then the carbon-carbon triple bond, 
then the NH3, then the sp3 hybridized carbon. And that's how you would get to answer choice A. <clears throat> for question four, what is the correct IUPAC name for the following molecule? So I just start counting up the longest carbon chain, four, five, six. If I went off of either way, this would be five, so that's not right. Or if I went off here, it'd be six, so that's one numbering system. And then I'll do the opposite way. And it looks like with the first numbering system, I'd get two bromo, four chloro, four, five dimethyl, hexane. They're both hexane for the parent chain. If I did it, um, <clears throat> sorry, this, let me get a little bit closer for you. If I go the other way, I would get two, three dimethyl, 3-chloro-5-bromo. So overall, that's smaller numbers. So that is, that's the numbering system we want to go with. But now we have to combine all these. So in alphabetical order, 5-bromo has to come first. But also I just want to note that even if you didn't know about the numbering system, you can immediately get rid of A and B because they're not hexane. So then you just have to decide between C, D, or E. And um, basically, then you just need to know which way to number it and how to combine everything. Otherwise, you've just basically gotten yourself down to a 50-50 shot at getting the right answer, even if you're not sure about the numbering system. So look for things like that to help you increase your chances of getting the right answer. So this is 4-bromo, 3-chloro. I'm combining it in this order because of alphabetical order. 2, 3, dimethyl hexane. So that should be answer choice C. What functional groups are present in the following molecules? We have a benzene ring here. This looks like an amide. This is an ester. This is an alcohol. Um, sometimes questions will count um, alkenes or alkynes as functional groups. It looks like they're not doing it here, so I'm going to ignore the double bonds. Here's another alcohol. Oh, we're not doing alkenes, alkynes. Okay, so I have found a benzene ring, an amide, an ester, not an ether, and these are not ketones. If they have a group next to them, that's considered the whole thing, like an ester. This isn't a ketone in ether, it's an ester. Um, and then a secondary alcohol, actually two secondary alcohols. Okay, so now that I've done that, then I'll go down to my answer choices and see if any of these are seeming correct. Sorry, I have, oh no, my camera just fell over. Let's see if I can't everything set back up. I left the base for my camera so I'm having to improvise. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go on each of these and see um, if there's anything that doesn't match up. So an amine, we didn't find an amine, we found an amide. So that one's wrong. There's no amine here, just an amide. Uh, same, oh no, this is amide. So we did find an amide. We found a secondary alcohol. So this one's promising. But this is not an ether and a ketone, it's an ester, so that one's wrong. C, oh, I think I um, remember these are basically the same, just in different order. So if you weren't sure that ether and ketone were wrong, that could have been the hint to you that there's not going to be two right answers. Um, there's an amide, there's a ketone, there's not a tertiary alcohol. All these alcohols are bonded to two carbons. So that makes these secondary alcohols. So the right answer is answer choice E. We've got an amide, a secondary alcohol, a benzene ring, an ester, and then another secondary alcohol. Okay. Um, for question six, what is the hybridization of carbons two and three around where the arrow is pointing? So this is going um, in the proper IUPAC name, one, two, three. So we're wondering what the hybridizations are of this and this carbon. So when I look at hybridization, if there's four things bonded, that means it must have hybridized with 
and S in 3P, so that's SP3. If there's two things bonded to it, or I mean three things bonded to it, that means it had to have an S and two Ps. This pi bond right here would be another P, but that's not part of the hybridization. So this carbon's hybridization is SP2. And if it has two things around it, this uses a pi bond. This uses a pi bond, both of those use P orbitals. So there's just one sigma bond here, so that's S, and the other sigma bond is P, so that's SP. So I'm just really looking to how many things it's bonded to. So this carbon is bonded to one, two things. So that's SP. Hybridization is SP. So one of these has to be SP. So this doesn't have SP, this doesn't have SP, and this doesn't have SP. So that makes it to where we know it's either B or E. So now we're going to look at carbon three. It's bonded to one, two, and an implied hydrogen. So three. So S, SP, SP2. So that's SP2. So the answer choice is B. Um, e is wrong because it's SP3. Which of the following is a pair of cis trans isomers? Okay, well, first of all, to be isomers, they have to have the same number of carbons and hydrogens. So this has three carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight implied hydrogens. This has one, two, three carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six implied hydrogens because there's only two implied hydrogens for each of these carbons to get a fully saturated ring. So these aren't even isomers. Um, let's see, these, let's CH3, CH, CH2, these are not isomers because they have the, I think these are the same molecule because you can't have cis trans isomerism if two are the same. Like if we switch these hydrogens out for each other, you wouldn't really be able to tell that anything was different. So I actually think this is just the mirror image of the same molecule. Now, if this had a carbon CH3 here and CH3 here, that would be an example of cis trans isomerism. But as it is, I think these are just the same. Um, here, We have BRs and hydrogens on each side, so two different things on each side of the double bond. And then this side, they're in the first molecule, they're on the same side, and here they're on the opposite side. So if you cover up the double bond, these two bromines are on the same side, and if you cover it up, it's a bromine and a hydrogen. So that's cis trans isomerism. So D is a or C is a good option. Now look at look at D. So D actually, this is kind of tricky, but this is actually not, I think this is a constitutional isomer because yes, if I cover this up, this is a bromine and hydrogen, but if I do that over here, it's the same thing. Both of these are just bromines and hydrogens. And actually you would need a bromine and a hydrogen on each side to achieve cis-trans isomerism. So if we wrote out the structural formula of this, it'd be carbon Br2, carbon H2. If we wrote the structural formula of this, it would be carbon, BrH, carbon, BrH. So these have two different structural formulas. They have the same number of carbons, hydrogens, and bromines, but these are not cis-trans isomers. So the only right option is answer choice C. Okay, which compound would you expect to have the lowest boiling point? This question is all about intermolecular forces. So the strongest intermolecular forces is hydrogen bonding, which means a hydrogen is bonded to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen, H with fun. Um, and you have to have a hydrogen available for hydrogen bonding like this. If you just have an oxygen in the middle, that doesn't have a hydrogen available for hy hydrogen bonding. The carbons are bonded to H, or the carbons are hydrogens are bonded to carbon, not fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. So you have to have it bonded directly to it. Um, then we have dipole-dipole. And then last but not least, we have London dispersion forces. Those are pretty much in everything, so they're not going to play a big part in this. But um, the stronger intermolecular forces you have, that means like two molecules are held really cl closely together. And when you're try trying to boil something, you're trying to basically spread those apart and fill up the space. So the weaker those intermolecular forces are, the lower the boiling point will be. 
So we would be looking for something with the least possible boiling point or the lowest possible intermolecular forces. So I'm going to just look at each of these and identify the intermolecular forces. So this one, the structure is like that. There's no intermolecular, or there's only dipole, dipole, no hydrogen bonding intermolecular forces. And um, this has a molecular structure, CH3OCOH, CH2, CH3. So this has an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen. So that has the hydrogen bonding as well as the dipole, dipole. Um, so automatically A has less intermolecular forces than B, so we can get rid of B. Next we have C, which has a CH2, 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 OH. So this has two alcohols with hydrogens available for hydrogen bonding. So there's H bonding and dipole. So this is still stronger intermolecular forces, so that would have a higher boiling point. And then D, CH3O, CH2, CH2, CH2. Okay, so that's very similar to B that has hydrogen bonding and dipole. So the right answer in this case would be, again, A has a lower, less intermolecular forces, so a lower, lower boiling point than D. And we know E is not correct because they have different uh, intermolecular forces. They definitely have different boiling points. Okay, nine. Which of the following is a set of constitutional isomers? To be constitutional isomers, you have to have the same number of atoms. Um, so in this case, the atoms involved are carbon, bromine, and hydrogen. Um, if they don't have the same number of atoms, then they're not isomers. And if they don't have the same number, or if they have the exact same structure, they're not isomers or the same molecule. So you have to look out for both of those. So in this case, we'll start with one. It says one, two, three, four, five carbons. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven hydrogens, nope. <laughs> and one bromine. Here we have one, two, three, four. Okay, so this only has four carbons. So this is not a constitutional isomer with A, but it could be with some of those others. So I'm just going to count it. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. Nope, nine hydrogens and one bromine. Okay, for three, this has one, two, three, four, five carbons. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven hydrogens and one bromine. So at least one and three are. But let's just go ahead and check out four just to make sure. So that has. Um, four things bonded to it already, so no implied hydrogen. So three, six, nine, ten, eleven hydrogens, one bromine, and one, two, three, four, five carbons. So one, three, and four all have five carbons, one bromine, and eleven hydrogens. So two is not a constitutional isomer, but all these are constitutional isomers of one another. So one, three, and four. So I think that would be answer choice E. Okay. So next question 10, which of these is an example of a tertiary amine? So an amine with two hydrogens and one carbon is primary. Two carbons and one hydrogen is secondary. Three carbons is tertiary. So this is a tertiary amine. So we're looking at a nitrogen with three carbons bonded to it. So this has one carbon bonded to it, so that's not right. This has two, so that's not right. This has one, so that's not right. This has one, so that's not right. So the only possible answer choice is E. Sometimes students will get confused because this nitrogen is bonded to one, two, three. So if this was an alcohol, it would be a tertiary alcohol, but it's not. Amines are 